What's up guys, Alec and Akiri here. And today we're gonna talk about auto-regulating your training so that you can gain maximum strength, build impeccable lifting technique, and add some solid slabs of muscle to go along with it all. People ask me all the time about auto-regulation as a progression method and really as a system of training in general, and I've never really discussed the topic in very much depth before other than with my actual clients. So I thought it was about time to share some of my thoughts about how to go about utilizing this method in the most optimal fashion so that we can make the sickest gains possible. And speaking of all this, if you're looking for a solid training program that relies on auto-regulation as the primary mode of training and mode of progression, look no further than my late intermediate template, which you can download from my website. Of all the generalized templates that I sell, this one is probably my favorite of them all simply because training like this is one of the most fun ways to train, in my opinion, and it tends to lead to rapid spurts in progress initially. Again, making it all the more fun to go out and hit the gym every day. Anyway though, let's get on with it. So the beauty of using an auto-regulated training program is that you're no longer tethered to the confines of a forced progression, which in essence attempts to view adaptation in a vacuum. That's what linear progressions do. Stress, recovery, adaptation, it's the mantra that we all hear time and time again. And there are many positive aspects to being held accountable to this rigid model in your training. I'm not going to touch on them today, but I do think that linear progressions get way too much of a bad rap these days, when in reality, I think that they're a fantastic choice for the majority of people the majority of time. So I'm not going to bash them at all. But that being said, being allowed to break free from those constraints every now and then can also be incredibly useful, especially as you move further along into your training journey. As your training age increases and your max efforts get better and better and stronger and stronger and your muscles get bigger and stronger, your nervous system becomes more efficient, your lifting technique becomes more precise and efficient things are gonna to start to change. You're gonna notice these changes and you're gonna notice the bad days more than you did before. Basically, as the ceiling gets higher, it becomes harder and harder to touch it every single day because there are more variables involved now and the margins for error have become much smaller. What this means is that performance is going to fluctuate from day to day, potentially in a very pronounced fashion. This could be due to sleep quality, it could be due to stress at work, it could be due to diet, maybe you breathed in too many pollutants from the air that day, or it could be a thousand other variables that we can't even quantify. The point is that these fluctuations are largely beyond your control. You can do what you can do and you can, get the fuck away, and you can control what you can control in the most optimal fashion and that's the end of the story but then there's everything else that you can't control so rather than get bogged down by those variables you can instead choose to embrace this and adopt the auto regulation method so now rather than being forced into lifting a specific and predetermined weight on a specific day regardless of how badly you may have slept or how much you may have going on at the office or in school or how much you may have drank the night before. Instead, the main principle at play here becomes finding the optimal weight to lift that particular day in order to exact the optimal amount of training stress that the body can handle based on its current state of readiness. No more than that and no less than that. Your only goal within the session is to find that exact dose. Today, that may be 100 pounds. Next session, it may be 95 pounds. The session after that, it may be 105 pounds. But the art of this whole thing is in paying attention to and identifying these natural fluctuations in strength that take place on a daily basis. And just because a certain weight was the optimal top weight this week does not mean that that same weight will be the optimal top weight next week. Your strength may go down slightly or it may increase slightly from day to day and from week to week or whatever. But the weight itself, the number on the bar that day, is actually inconsequential. As long as there's a general upward trend over time in the weights that you're capable of consistently handling and consistently owning, then you're on the right track. 
but applying the optimal training stress. Not so much that recovery is impeded, but just enough to spark a little bit of adaptation to nudge you into the next training session is really what the goal is here. Thus, when proper top weights are consistently chosen and greed is kept at bay, the gains will flow in long and bountiful stretches, I promise you, and new peaks will undoubtedly be reached. And we achieve all of this by utilizing a technique known as ramping up. At its face, ramping up is a very simple concept. You pick a target rep number and you keep adding weight to the bar with every set until you get close to the heaviest weight that you can lift for that number of reps with good form that particular day. Then you take some weight off the bar and you knock out a few more sets. However, in practice, this concept becomes much more nuanced. With the daily physical and psychological fluctuations occurring based on a myriad of factors, some known and some unknown, finding and striking the perfect dosage of training stress time and time again to create the optimal adaptation and training effect becomes a skill in and of itself. In fact, Mastering the art of ramping up is probably the singular most important aspect of nearly any auto-regulated training program. Executing properly or improperly in this regard is ultimately what's going to make or break things and dictate whether you see steady and impressive progress or merely face stagnation and regression. The biggest pitfall within this method is greed and trying to take more and more and more even though it isn't necessarily in your best interest to do so. Just because you can lift a certain weight on a certain day doesn't mean that you should lift that weight on that day. And it's important to note that there's a very, very big difference in terms of the recovery deficit that's created by just for example purposes here hitting a clean triple with a weight that represents approximately 90% of your one rep max on a particular day versus hitting a tough and grindy triple with a weight that represents approximately 95% of your one rep max on that same particular day. Even though the difference in weight on the bar here between these two examples may actually be rather small, the latter will take far longer to recover from and ultimately is probably actually going to hinder your progress by negatively impacting subsequent training sessions. The former, however, will in a relative sense actually be rather easy to recover from. And once the body has become acclimated to that sort of training stress, it's going to be one that can be applied repeatedly for long stretches of time with little ill effect. The trick here is in figuring out what represents 90% today. Because today, 100 pounds might represent 90%, and tomorrow, that same 100 pounds might represent 95% instead. So during your training sessions, it's very important to pay attention to subjective measures, such as how you feel, as well as objective measures, such as how well the bar is moving that day at any given weight. If 90 pounds moves well today, mm, excuse me, then maybe 100 pounds should be your top weight today. But if 90 pounds moves great tomorrow, then maybe 110 pounds should be your top weight tomorrow instead. And this is why it's so important to log all of your training sessions. Leave notes about how things felt and how your body felt and how you slept, but also Film all of your lifts so that you can compare objective feedback and subjective feedback from day to day and reconcile those two things together to make the most informed and accurate decisions possible. Because if you pay attention to all of these variables and you gather all of this data, then eventually you will be able to become very accurate in your analyses of your lifts. And with time, you'll be able to select your optimal training weights with a high level of skill and precision the majority of the time. Time, allowing you to make the best gains possible for the longest period of time. So as for how to go about executing a proper ramp up, there are a few key guidelines that you need to follow. First, you'll want to perform a generalized warm up for the muscles and the joints that you're about to train. Whatever you typically do here to get warmed up will be fine. Next, you'll begin the ramp up process by performing two to three light primer sets of the target exercise in order to prepare your muscles, joints, and nervous system for the ramp up on the actual exercise that you'll be training that day. Moderate jumps in weight are acceptable here. Start with the bar and work your way up slowly from there. 
The ramp up begins in earnest once you've reached approximately 60 to 70% of your one rep max on the exercise. At this point, all sets should be considered working sets and the increases in weight from set to set should become smaller and smaller until you reach the top set for the day. You'll likely find jumps of 20 to 30 pounds to be ideal for the initial sets on the squat and deadlift variations and 10 to 20 pounds to be ideal on upper body pressing and pulling variations. However, once you get past approximately 80 or 85% of one rep max and you begin to approach your top set for the day, your jumps in weight should decrease into the 10 to 20 pound range for squat and deadlift variations and into the 5 to 10 pound range for upper body pressing and pulling variations. In my experience, these jumps provide the best balance between maximizing nervous system potentiation and minimizing accumulated fatigue on the front side of the ramp. When ramping up, it's important to never exceed the target rep number during any of the sets. For example, if you're ramping up to a heavy set of three reps, then you should perform sets of three reps for every single working set that day, even the lightest ones. This also means that you should reserve this ramp up technique only when you plan to work in the one to five rep range per set. Using more reps than this will cause too much fatigue to accumulate during the ramp, thereby limiting how much weight you're capable of lifting on the top set and lessening the overall quality of the work as well as the overall training effect. Conversely, part of the beauty of this method is in the accumulation of quality volume and nervous system potentiation on the front side of the ramp. The easy sets during this climbing portion of the ramp are not to be glossed over. They're just as important to the overall success of the program as the heavier sets are. Focus on perfect form, solid execution, and owning the weight with every single set. Treat every set from the empty bar on up like it's the heaviest set of the day. In total, it should take you anywhere from six to 10 total sets to work up to your top set of the day. After you've reached the top weight, you should remove anywhere from 20 to 50 pounds from the bar and perform an additional two to three back off sets of three to five reps per set just to accrue a bit more high intensity volume while your nervous system is still primed and firing on all cylinders. Finally, as I alluded to earlier, do not get greedy. Every time you do a top set on an exercise, you should be relatively certain that you could have done one more rep if you absolutely had to. If you can't sincerely tell yourself that you left one rep in the tank, then you probably went too heavy and it will impact the long-term success of the program at some point. Remember, the primary goal with this training method is to accrue high quality and relatively easily recoverable training volume over time, as well as stimulate the nervous system frequently with multiple heavy but crisp sets every single week. This will stimulate newfound strength gains, pack on some extra muscle through what is likely a novel training experience, and not only resensitize the body to future straight set work, but also make it more effective in general through improved baseline nervous system activation. It's also important to note that this method works best with big compound exercises. Personally, I've used it with great success with the bench press, the strict overhead press, the push press, which I'm doing right now, the weighted chin up, the weighted dip, the incline press, a bunch of different deadlift variations, all variations of squats, as well as Olympic lift variations like the hang power snatch, the power clean, and the snatch grip high pull, and even the one arm dumbbell power snatch. But there are plenty of choices here and all of these exercises will make for some incredibly productive training when utilizing this technique. And just one final point I want to touch on here. You have several options here about how you want to go about programming your workouts with this method. Part of what's awesome about the method in general is that since all of the training is auto-regulated and therefore essentially tailored to your current strength levels on any given day, it makes it very easy to increase the frequency of your training without running yourself into the 
ground and creating a recovery deficit that you can't recover from. The higher frequency here will lend itself to more practice with the specific motor patterns that you're trying to master and the intensity will always be matched to your daily capabilities, meaning that strength levels can increase quite rapidly here when you first start using this method. And this is basically how I trained myself to hit my lifetime best squat of 530 pounds. I worked up to a heavy set of three to five reps on the squat three times per week during my preparation period for my powerlifting competition. And then when I switched to singles, I was able to hit PRs for multiple weeks in a row, culminating in that lift of 530 pounds. But basically, so if you want to focus primarily on strength, then I would recommend using two or even three ramp ups per week for the exercises that you want to focus on with an additional two to three back off sets per training session after you've hit your top set for the day. And then if you want to focus on a blend of strength and size, then a better option in this case would be to do just one or maybe two ramp up sessions per week early in the training week and with an additional two to three back off sets done after the top set of the day. And then 48 or 72 hours later, you would come back out and you'd hit the same lift again, but this time you'll just do straight sets where you work your way up to 80% on the low end or 90% on the high end of whatever the top set was that you hit earlier in the week. And then you can just do something like five sets of five reps with it or four sets of six to eight reps, whatever you prefer. So for example, if you worked your way up to a top set of five reps with 200 pounds on Sunday, then on Wednesday, you could come back out and do a five by five with 180 pounds, which is 90% of the top set. Or you could do four sets of six to eight reps with 160 pounds, which is 80% of the top set. But this is just another way of setting things up. You can use whichever method that you prefer more. And if you go the former route, then you can hit it hard for a couple months and then switch back to a more volume-based straight set approach like this one I just mentioned. And your body should be ripe for some new gains there because not only will you be stronger, but your nervous system will be more efficient in general and your motor patterns on the lift will be much cleaner and much crisper. Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to throw it a like and a share. And don't forget to leave me some love in the comments down below. And if you're interested in online coaching, be sure to shoot me an email at onkiri.elite at gmail.com. And I'd be happy to pass some more information your way. Or simply visit my website, www.onkirielitefitness.com for more details. Anyway, keep training hard and I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>